Sanjit, good to talk to you again. Good to see you. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Exotic Astrology. Nice to see you back. And finally, today, Vishti Larson is with us here again. Thank you very much for coming. Namaste. Welcome to Thank you. Thank you. Namaste. It's a pleasure yes. to be here again. Yes. yes. Today, he will be speaking on the most awaited, the most hot topic probably in YouTube in the astrological community. Really? Navamsha. <laughs> yes, Navamsha and Navamsha. So you had been a super duper hit when you did the series on Venus. So welcome and please enlighten us. Um, glad to hear you are fond of the last webinar and our last talk. Um, so, uh, yes, Navamsha. I didn't know it was the hottest topic on YouTube. <laughs> so, Navamsha. The Navamsha is, uh, is not a secret chart per se. We have, every tradition has a few secrets on its use. And um, they, they, in essence, are all about the Navamsha Bhava. Um, the Navamsha, there, there are some things that are said about Navamsha, which are not entirely, um, um, they, they don't cover the entire uh, importance of Navamsha. And I'd like to start off with that. Um, the Navamsha is a chart which is supposed to show Bhagya and is also supposed to show Dharma. Um, and uh, Parashara considers it among the most important divisional charts. All right. In fact, when he ranks the charts in the Shoda Shavarga scheme, he gives most importance to three charts, Rashi, Navamsha, and Shastiamsha. Okay. What's important in this context is that when he's not speaking about all the 16 divisional charts, then he says Namamsha and Rashi are the most important. And when he limits the, the divisions to, let's say, seven Vargas or whatnot, he very much takes pre, uh, the Rashi, Namamsha, and Drekana into high importance. Okay? And the tradition of astrology that we have in, in, uh, in Puri, Achutananda's tradition, um, uh, my Guruji's tradition, uh, and mine as well, of course. Uh, our lineage um, pr prides ourselves in using many divisional charts when we read the, the birth chart. And we take a lot of importance in Rashi and Navamsha. But this is the thing with tradition, for example. When it was the time of Jagannath Rath, uh, the my, my Guruji's grandfather, he would always draw Rashi Navamsha and Drekana. Okay? Always. And then from there, the next generation, which was Kashinadrat, which would be my Guruji's uncle, he would always draw Rashi Navamsha, but maybe not Drekana. So what's happening is you can see that with time, the, uh, the importance of the divisional charts is diminishing. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, my Guruji uses all divisional charts and he must rectify the Navamsha. Of course, if you get Navamsha, you get Trikana. So you just a question of whether you analyze it or not. So, but uh, but uh, I know that when it comes to my Guruji, sometimes he will only rely on the Rashi chart to read the chart. Okay? But he will know the limitations. He will know, okay, this answer I cannot give without reading another Varga or do Navamsha or something similar. But the minimum that he will do in a chart reading is rectify the Navamsha. But even if he's without the Navamsha, he will still be able to read the chart. Okay? And that inspires um, me uh, because I can see that, they, that he has a, a, what we call a, um, a limit, a, um, a boundary that he knows the Rashi chart can, can show, can 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 indicate in people's lives. And by knowing the boundaries of that, then he knows what he can answer and what he cannot answer. And when you think in that term, in those terms, many astrologers today will predict and they'll just show the Rashi chart, right? And I'm not saying that they're bad in prediction or wrong in prediction. I'm just saying that, they, that we don't get to know about the boundary. We don't get to know about the limitations of the Rashi chart in that. Mm -hmm. And, um, that what, what we would like to imbibe in our tradition, in the students that come to our tradition, is the usage of these other divisional charts. Mm -hmm. Because then you get to, because you're getting to understand 
how the charts are working together, how the world and you are working together. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit in the beginning of this, of the presentation I'll be showing. Um, some misnomers, some people say that the Navamsha chart only works after a certain age, like some people say uh, 35, 56, 32, 30, whatever. Some say 24, etc. Some will divide, some will first find the longevity, divide the life, lifespan in three parts, and then decide when Navamsha is going to show up. Okay? That, I like that, that's very smart. But uh, we don't need to do that. Um, uh, Navamsha, in fact, will show your birth circumstances. So if it's working from birth, why would we wait until our 30s for, before using it? We have shloka saying, if this is the Navamsha Lagna, the door of the, of the delivery room is there. Uh, if this is your, uh, if this is there in the Navamsha, the way you will be delivered is like this, upside down, whatnot. That's also Navamsha. So it's working from birth, actually. Okay. Um, and uh, and then uh, some. So then people say, all right. So Navamsha can still work from birth. Can Shasti Yamsha work from birth or whatnot? Yes. And uh, now Shasti Yamsha will tell you which uh, which uh, house on the street you were living in or born in. Okay. So Shasti Amsha can be used for that. If you read the Nadis, you will see that. So all the divisional charts can work immediately from birth. So why is the, has there even come up this topic about when does the Navamsha start working? The reason it's come up is because that the Navamsha is important for Bhagya. Okay? And the exact calculation as to when your Bhagya begins, what we call the term Bhagya Udaya, Rising of Bhagya depends on your ninth lord in the Rashi chart. Mm -hmm. And because the ninth lord of the Rashi chart is related to the ninth house, and Navamsha is a division of nine, therefore also related to the ninth house. So therefore, once the ninth house of the Rashi chart allows the Bhagya to begin, it means that the Navamsha's Bhagya is beginning. Okay? So then the question is, what is happening, happening before that age? Durbhagya. Okay? So now the Navamsha is not only for Subhagya, it's also for Durbhagya. So until the age of the Ninth Lord, uh, or the plan is join the Ninth House or Lord, that we are actually examining if there are issues with Durbhagya in the person's life, misfortune, setbacks. And then the same Navamsha will work from birth to show those setbacks. Okay, okay. So all we are saying is that when you use the Navamsha chart to see Subhagya, it's after a certain age. Prior to that age, it's Durbhagya. We'll still use the Navamsha for that purpose. Okay, so I have a question here. Like when you say that it's related to the ninth lord. So suppose somebody's ninth lord is Venus. So are you talking that Venus gets active at the 25th year? Are you saying that? It means that in the 25th or 26th year, actually it's 26th year, okay? okay. Um, then at that age, the bhagya of Venus, Venus means vahana, vehicles, marriage, vastra, is also their clothes, good clothes, good comforts, couch, bed, all that type of thing. That comes from the age of 26. Okay. Yes. So right. can you just say in short the periods for all the planets because there's some confusion regarding this. There, there are several periods for the planets. Okay. All right. I know four, four groups, and I'm sure there are more. Okay, four groups of periods, and they're groups because you have a grouping which is from birth till ten. Okay, birth till ten. Then you have another grouping, which is from ten till um, twenty. All right, and then you have another grouping which is from 20 till 50. And there's another grouping from 50 till, um, I think 70, but I'm not sure. All right. And then the question is, what happens after that? Mm -hmm. I thought there's another group, or maybe it's longer. I'm, I, I have not seen. Now, what we are interested in is that um, the, the first groups, there are two groups, uh, which are ranging from birth till about 20. Those two groups are basically called the Janma group. Okay. So it is saying the first part of life is till 20. That uh, corresponds to uh, Parashar, which, who says that, um, that Bala Rishta and Yoga Rishta last until 20 years of age. That's what he's saying. So that is the, what we call the beginning group, the first group. We don't use that for Bhakya. Okay? We can time events 
but we are not using it for fortune and bhagya. So, now the second group is used for the bhagya. And that start, go, starts from 20 and ends at the age of about 50, approximately. All right? In that grouping, uh, the, groups, the, the planets have the following uh, values. Um, the sun starts uh, in their range from 21 to 22. Okay. The moon is next until 24. Mm -hmm. uh, then Venus until 26. Then Mars until 28. Then we have um, Mercury until 30. Mm -hmm. Jupiter until 32. Some people exchange these. All right. I have not seen that successful. I use what I've just mentioned. Um, then uh, that means the Mercury-Jupiter group is exchanged for some people. That's, that's what people say. I, I don't use that. It doesn't work in my experience. Then we have, then after Jupiter's an, a, a value or age at 32, then we have a shift in the groupings. Okay. Then we suddenly get at the age of 36, Saturn shows up. So there's a shift four years. Earlier it was two years, now it's four. The malefics, the hard malefics, Saturn, Ra, Ketu, have longer periods. And this lasts until the age of about 40. Okay? And then Ketu shows up. Mm -hmm. And then Rahu shows up at the age of 44. And this lasts around until the age of 48. I have had a doubt as to whether Jupiter's value is from 32 until 35 and then Saturn takes over. Because I've seen many people have Jupiter's results at age 33 and sometimes 33, 34, all right? I'm explaining my, my, my understanding also in this, my usage of this, my practical application of this. Um, when we reach that age of 48, which Rahu is ending with, then at 49, a new grouping starts, which starts over from the sun. And, but it's longer, it's much, much longer. Then the, the year gaps are not two years, but longer. Okay. Um, my Guruji has not fully unraveled that part yet. He's, he's sort of saved that a bit. He's teasing me with it sometimes. But, but this is the grouping that we'll use for Bhagya. So now some people say that Ketu is older than Rahu. And so they exchange Ketu and Rahu's values sometimes. All right. I have seen the grouping that I've just mentioned, and I was also taught this works. Okay. It could be for other contexts that they change this. All right. So those are the groupings. So, uh, for example, if you what you're interested in is to find the oldest planet associated with your ninth house. All right. Because then you know that's how long you have to wait. I have Rahu in ninth house. I have to wait until uh, at uh, earliest um, 43, 44, and latest 48. So you see the planet which is in the ninth house that also, year or the activation also, of the ninth lord? Both. You do everything. You see planets in the ninth, planets joined with the lord, and you even see if the lord has joined planets in Navamsha. Or oh, ninth lord of the Rashi, if it is joined planets in the Navamsha. Exactly. I see. Then you have the full context of when Bhagya is supposed to begin. Because until that age, you could be having Dur Bhagya. All right? And you're especially concerned with this if malefics like uh, Ketu, Rahu, Saturn, Manga, if they are joined, then they cause setbacks. In the sense, join the ninth house or ninth lord, they cause setbacks. All right? Yeah, setbacks you mean uh, till that time or at that year? Till that time. Till uh, that time they will cause a setback. All right? But they don't start from birth. They can start at some point. All right. So the big uh, work is to see when is that point starting? For example, let's say Mars was uh, in uh, Gemini in the ninth house. So I will say, all right, um, this is supposed to indicate that the Durbhagya ends at 27. Okay. And uh, Subhagya will begin with the age of Mercury at the age of uh, 30, for example. All right. And then I will try to see, is there, uh, can I see when this problem would start? Maybe it would start only at the age of, let's say, 27 or 28 and end at 28 itself. All right? Yes. So, so one has to do a little bit of work to figure that out. All right? Um, so that is about the Bhagya, the Bhagya Udaya. And this is, this is why these ages are coming into play when we talk about Navamsha. 
all right? But truth be told, you don't have to wait until that age before you get married. So does that mean Navamsha is not working even after marriage? No, it is absolutely working. As soon as you get into a relationship that you're seriously considering to take into a marriage, Navamsha is working, all right? Immediately. In fact, Navamsha is even working when you go to school. Because this Navamsha is very important to show what are your interests, what are your skills, do you like going to school? All right? So if you ask me, Navamsha is working from birth. Yes, yeah, so right? when you said that uh, as soon as you get into a serious relationship, which you plan to convert to marriage, so then yes. it gets active. So can you throw some light on this? Because I think there will be many questions on this regard. <laughs> Um, practically, I'm not going to talk about that, practically, because there's some work to be done in the Rashi chart first, all right? Like you have to see seventh house and seventh lord and Venus and relation between seventh house and seventh lord and Venus. And you have to see that maybe even Dharakarak should be added and Tipi lord. There's so much to be learned from the Rashi chart in that context. The Navamsha is really useful when a person is deciding to get married and is married. Okay? Okay, now another Very question. Useful. Yeah, so another... I'm going to try and give an example as to why I would have, why I like to keep these boundaries and limitations in my chart analysis. Firstly, so I, so it makes my life easier. And um, secondly, because for example, um, the beauty of the Navamsha is it can confirm what our, our predictions are in the Rashi chart. Let us say somebody shows up in their chart I see a problematic combination, for example, um, maybe they have uh, a simple thing, like um, maybe sun is in seventh house. That's not considered a good combination, all right? In the Rashi. In the Rashi chart. This is Rashi chart seventh house. Okay. I'm just giving a small example, okay? So there's a prediction. One of the predictions for sun in the seventh house is that the person will like partners who, make, who look like themselves. Oh, okay. the person himself or herself. Yes. So okay. this can now now this means a lot of things, right? Yeah. This can mean a lot of things. This can mean oh, the person must have similar appearance. They must dress the same way. They must somehow have this. Somehow the their appearance must look the same. It can also mean maybe the person is a homosexual. Okay. Okay. Interesting. So, so you see, there's a broad option here. There's many options. Ah. Yeah. It could be this, it could be that, it could be that, it could be that, it could be. So it's, you just have to get the general idea from that sun in seventh house. Why am I making it so generalized? Can I not be specific and just say, oh, the person's gay? No. Is the person um, like somebody with the same clothes? No. It does it depend on the sign in the seventh in Rashi chapter? No, not at all. It depends on the Navamsha. Your sexuality is also defined in Navamsha. I cannot see the sexuality from the Rashi chart. It's not possible. I can get an idea. So, for example, somebody shows up, they have sun in seventh house. Okay, let me see. They like something to be sane. So then I open the Navamsha. Now, uh, homosexuality comes from planets like Saturn and Mercury. All right? So if they have a strong say in the seventh in Navamsha, then I say, oh, the person is homosexual. All right. If Sun is there in the seventh in D1 and there in Navamsha, if Saturn Mercury associate. Yes, exactly. Wow, but so that is a way to confirm that. All right. So what about another combination? Some interesting combinations. There's a combination given in uh, Sarvata Chintamani. If Rahu or Ketu are in the seventh house in Rashi chant, the person will have affairs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Affairs. But I've seen so many charts where that's not the case, all right? But actually, you have to understand the deeper principle. If Ketu is in seventh and Rashi chart, the person will not commit to any relationship until a son is born. Okay, but why about the son? Ketu is Kulasya Unnatim, wants, wants to have the growth of the Kula. This is a sutra from Jamini. Ketu Kulasya Unnatim, all right? So the person wants Kula, wants family. So if there's no family, they're running away. And the definition of their family would be a son. Now this depends. No, it doesn't depend so much. If you're a man or a woman, you still, if kids is in seven, you require a child, otherwise you're ready to leave the partner. And distinctly a son, okay? Okay, only a son. I mean, daughter is also valid or it doesn't work? 
it, it, you know, I've debated whether some people in more matrilineal cultures would uh, want a daughter, but I have not seen charts to, to give me that impression yet. All right. So, so I don't know that yet. But what I'm interested in is that if that Ketu is in seventh house, it can cause a problem in marriage because the person is looking to go to another spouse. All right. And then we can get into the considerations as to why because there's no child or where there's nobody to continue the lineage or things like that. That's not relevant for me. I open the Navamsha chart because now I have a debate. Is, are there two marriages in this chart? That's my debate. Ketu in seventh. Is there two marriages? Rahu in seventh. Completely different reason, but are there two marriages? And I do, then I confirm. I see. Is there a yoga between the first house and eighth house in Navamsha? That's a combination for divorce. Yoga between yeah. first and eighth. Is there yoga between seventh and eighth in Navamsha? Spouses asking for divorce. Okay, interesting. Is there a yoga between the eighth house in Navamsha and the second house in Navamsha? L leaving the spouse because of second spouse. Because second house is eighth from the seventh. Wow. Second house is the next spouse, yes. So the eighth house is linked to the second house. Divorce is happening because a new person, third person entered. All right? Yeah. So as soon as I see Rahu or Ketu in seven and Rashi chart, I start looking for these combinations in Navamsha because it can mean anything. Anything. So now and you if can these specifically combinations are not there, I'm sorry? You can specifically say that, okay, seventh and eighth are related, so the spouse is asking for a divorce. Exactly. Then you, you got it. Yes. Yeah. And one thing short. I so would what have I seen either? Yeah. But if none of those are there and we still have Rahu or Ketu in seven in Rashi chat, <laughs> no divorce is happening. Okay. Then I debate, are there affairs? Then I look for that second day in Texas. What if there are no affairs? Right? Then no problem. Because but generally there be, in... But there could be separation from partner. Then I see if six thousand is involved in the Rashi chart. Six thousand separation from part. Yeah, this is what I was supposed to say. Six thousand. Yes. So, the, but that's physical separation only, right? Okay. So then, but if there's not, you know, not even that, then I say no, no problem. Bravo, Kitsu in seven did nothing. No problem. Can okay. you do something else, maybe? <laughs> or maybe there was a boyfriend or girlfriend before marriage because oh, okay. she is showing marriage it is not showing boyfriend and girlfriends okay so if you're saying if these are not there in the d9 and if rahu or ketu is only in d1 seventh house so then these things can happen before marriage that's what you were saying already. yes yes oh. and then there's no worry right so I think we will continue the next part in the next video. So stay tuned. So we'll upload it in parts. Okay. Thank you sure, very much. Sure. Bye -bye. So what? Yes.